weekend preview time. Dag and Beaver with you to get stuck into... We've got some Group 1 racing to go still in the spring carnival. We've got Caulfield to look at as well as the Hunter as the New South Wales Country Tour kicks off for the next few weeks. Beaver, what's happening? Well, I'm just uh, punching along, working away, carnival over. Um, so, yeah, now we get down to uh, a little bit uh, more tricky affairs in finding some winners, but uh, uh, let's hope that there is a few out there for us um, at some reasonable odds. Yeah, we've got Caulfield first, which uh, perhaps I'm jumping at shadows in some of these features, but I think there's value there in a couple of them. Uh, I'd get interested to get your thoughts once you get there. I like I like the Newcastle card. Uh, should all things be equal there? I think that's it's nice to get back to just some simple benchmark racing after all the craziness of spring. So hopefully some winners are had there as well. Melbourne Cup Carnival's in the books. Uh, Champion Stakes Day's in the books. So yeah, any late takeaways very quickly? I Oh, look, um, Viasicino was uh, outstanding to take the one of the races uh, on the final day. Uh, probably would have won the cup uh, in no, all. No doubt, no in all fairness. Um, so that was that was outstanding. Um, just trying to think back to to what else was some quality runs. Prior to Jenny's retired, and uh, uh, that was kind of expected. Um, sort of sad postscript, but yeah. So post script, I was thought that Tino was going to get us the trockies there, but Mr. B um, got the split up the inside and uh, finished off and back to its best form. So that was that was an outstanding run and it was a great race. Uh, really enjoyed that. Um, but overall, a good carnival and uh, probably a good result. Uh, all things equal for the show. If right to party had have held on and Antino had have got there, it would have been a very nice afternoon, but they didn't which is the old story story of my life. But anyway, we'll, let's look at Caulfield, hey? And uh, we've got the rail in the back to the oh, six-metre mark, actually. The weather should be right. I think there's a bit of drizzle around today, but I think it, I've treated it as dead. With the rail out that far, hopefully the worst of the inside should be okay. So sometimes we do get real wide there, but I, I've treated this as all, for all intents and purposes, probably inside, similar to how Kenzo generally plays inside early, and then we spread as we go through the afternoon. Any thoughts on any of that? Yeah, I thought that might be the case. Um, there might be a bit of favouritism in Caulfield on the inside, and I'll be it'll be interesting to get the the, the lay of the day early because um, yeah, if there's any favours to the those up front, we kick off with a benchmark 74, 1700 metres starts the day. We've got a bit of a Bendigo lead in from a few weeks back. Who have you come up with? Yeah, I, I narrowed it down to two, um, and I just went the slightly better odds in this in Rua Carcarada. Um, third up here, I love the, the last start um, win. Um, it's been thereabouts um, this time in. And it beats Here Comes Johnny there. And Here Comes Johnny came out and has subsequently won, I think, at Packham. Um, post that and was a nice little win. So um, that form stacks up. So I think he can run well. To beat Shaw, um, again, it's working through uh, this prep quite nicely. couple of nice runs. Third up here presents well and I'll be saving on it. Beautiful. Uh, I've I've got Shaw on top. I am going to that to that Bendigo race. All but one there, either side of the post. It one gets a right similar run again here. Should be very hard to beat. I thought High and Proud would be a nice price third up here, but it's come up favourite. So uh, probably why I haven't put on top. But third up, Mickey D looks a tick. As I said, feels short to me. And at a hundred to one, I could almost entertain something on Thor in here. Um, very small, but it is. Um, I know it's 18 months off, but the jump outs showed a good deal of intent and is possibly a better horse than a lot of these. Obviously on a rehab prep, though, so um, nothing too crazy there. Might be just one for the exotics working home through the line. Yeah, no, that'll do us for that race. The second is 1,100-metre benchmark, 74, and I've gone looking for the – and I like the price about it, actually. The blue colour's fresh here. Pantalone looks to be set up for a summer campaign. The two trials were good. Uh, Zara jumps on. It's never missed a place fresh. Resumed uh, in a decent enough race last time out where it uh, just missed behind Scissor Step. Has some proper three-year-old form around it. Long story short, I think there's a little bit of a tail here and it can be some fresh blood on the scene. Uh, we've lost Deep Float Diva. It's out. Uh, and Tiffany Valentine was a one that I thought might be a price and it's favourite. So maybe next best, but I did want probably twice the price there. Beaver. Charlemagne's a big yeah, lot, actually, off nice trials, but keep going. 
Yeah, I've got Pantalone on top as well. Um, goes well first up, uh, fresh here. Uh, ran in some open class um, when last in work. Um, I think it can run really well, gets the right draw here and, and hopefully the right setup. I thought the main danger was um, the resuming Rockets Tiger. If you go back its last start, it finished three lengths behind Briasa, uh, which we know that's good form. Um, so I think that can stack up here. So I thought at double figure odds, it might be uh, the main danger. Very good. The third is the 1,400-metre benchmark 84. We've lost Is It Me? And it, uh, what's it left me with? Bigolino on top, actually. Uh, two quiet trials, but they were both, uh, it was getting through its motions quite nicely. First up, last prep, it just was nabbed on the line by Chorlton Lane, who was flying at the time. It's good enough form for this. It then went on and I think won 1,400 again at Sandown. It either leads or gets can gets the tag on Kazad, I think, Right place, right time, a bit of a claim. Looks good to me. From Regal Vow now, who um, has a nice turn of foot and might be the last one on the scene. And I, I did investigate this Queensland horse, which is sort of feels a bit scary debuting for the um, Hayes boys, Madame Odette. But you might have a better feel on that one. Yeah, it's certainly, certainly a chance here. And interesting, it is now in the Hay stables, so certainly one to watch. Um, that's for sure. I went for Bigolino as well. Okay. Um, thought it could run well. Only had the three runs last prep. You mentioned the Chorton Lane run. Um, it's its last win run before it went out, led all the way and beat Petey's Bassett, um, who was going good at the time as well, um, at Sandown. And the start before that was uh, not far off La Ferrari. Um <laughs> So I think that's pretty good form. Goes well fresh, gets the three kilo claim here, drawn well. Um, we'll sit on the speed and it might be hard to chase down. The fourth is the 1400 metre blue sapphire stakes, a group three here. Coleman comes back from group one land for most of this prep. Is it? Is it the obvious? It is the obvious. I think um, meets a much easier grade race than it has been racing in. I think, uh, this sets up perfect for here, you know, second behind Switzerland, two lengths, two starts back, and then uh, ran in the group one last start. Uh, look, this is group, group racing horse back to group three, which is, this is barely, I think, a group three race. Yeah. Um, clear on top. Yeah, not much to add. That, that Coolmore just sort of passed it by, that race. It was, it was over by the time it got into it. Before that, the run behind Switzerland. Obviously, it was very good. Blue colours are danger, Pisces. Uh, looks obvious, J-Mac scary uh, third pick if I need one look I am velvet is completely insane the horse is a lunatic but I think it'll win a, a nice race at some point and knock everyone out of something but has to be Coleman's race for me as well the listed uh whatever it is is up next 1100 meter listed race village stakes and we've got the two in the market here off a straight track flop you're just forgiving that I am forgiving that what are you again doing? it's it's a fairly similar um, scenario to the, the last race. Um, Ferrari uh, was good prior to that. I'm willing to forgive um, a group three against Ipmus, who uh, flying. Um, yeah, uh, this probably led up to, which I was probably a bit surprised that it did. I think it's slightly better just off the pace. Um, so I think it'll get that here. It can see it can it to from gate probably. three. There's not a lot of pay. It probably leads if it wants, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it might have to, um, but I think this is this is far different gravy here. Enough. And uh, for me, uh, it's clear on top pick. Uh, can't find anything to beat it, to be honest. So I just kept coming back to it. Well, I think we've got two bits of evidence to just say it doesn't like straight. So forget both those runs and treat the rest of the form like it is. It is deep prep, but it goes on top. Uh, and the danger is kin, third up. Uh, back to Caulfield, it, it's never gone at all second up. So, And that was in that straight race. I think it was the same race. It was up straight as well, but uh, has a terrible second up record. It'll bounce back. The, the resuming run behind Nadal was good. So two hopes for me in the... I'll go the same one as you there. Ferrari from Kin in the fifth. The sixth, we've got this 1,200-metre Phillies race here, uh, which is essentially a benchmark 70 once you take out Anisa, who's probably not with us. And it led me to put that, um, to give one more crack to to be or not to be, I thought it was going really well. It's been there or thereabouts in stronger stuff. Uh, quick backup from Cup Week where it went well behind Amelita. And 
probably sits outside League Gate 15 is my big concern. But at the price, I'll put it on top. From Rich Doddy, who ends up outside lead, I suggest, and that was quite soft last time out. Uh, I like it. And, and if you look at her two wins, she's won the races fairly softly in about three strides. She's managed to put fields away. So maybe a top horse. The Yulong Colours are certainly kicking goals this spring. So I might find a way to – I'll find a way to try and cover both, uh, whether that's a better result on to be or not to be and just saving Rich Doddy. But I think they're the main two – I'd say scared if she's got pizzazz and next best if I had to look for a third number. What have you come up with? Yeah, I'm pretty keen. She's got pizzazz can yeah. run well in this. Um, that's a great first up, first up tilt um, for Moody Coleman. Uh, got car aboard here. Uh, that was a maiden. Uh, they wanted to get a, a win and uh, you know, went went and started dollar twenty and won one pretty easy two and a half lengths a maiden at Kilmore. Um, so it needed that kill, needed that win. Um, and they certainly got it. Uh, but when you look, go back and look at it in its last prep, it was racing in an open class company, starting favourite, um, and wasn't far off them. Um, only just got beat by Blue Renegade um, at Sandown, you know, Maiden, then went to open class races and finished third and second. Come out here, got the kill. Uh, I think $5 is a bit of a steal at the moment. I like the value. Brilliant. The first leg of the quaddy is the first of the group ones. The mile, 1,000 guineas for the three old fillies, Waller and J-Mac, short price favourite, coming off sprinting home in a slow carbine club last week. Is that is that it or is there more to this race? I think there has to be more to this race, but I might be wrong. I'm not so uh, – look, this filly looks like uh, – it looks like it's quite versatile here. Um, I don't know there is. Like if you – both both last rounds have been – very, very good. Mm. Like the last one, as you said, it was the it won quite well. One by three and a half lengths, set off the pace, um, looked hard to fall. And then it was coming from Ramwick, where it did similar. Beat a fairly good horse there. Um, oh, I'm pretty keen. I don't think that the price is, is too bad. I mean, there's only two horses under $10. The rest um, just, yeah, Dominator is 15, which it took care of previously. Double markets one two, but um, probably in you know one well last start that was that was quite good at eighteen dollars. Mm. So you're getting some really good values some of those horses as well, but they're they're a bit inconsistent. So I'm just you know Gigi's Mistruth is one that I have liked, but um, probably disappointed the last two starts to be honest. But prior to that, it looked to be going good. I'll probably have something on it just because I have been spruiking it, but I'm pretty keen. The favourite is going to be the hard to beat here. The favourite probably wins if J-Mac looking at the screen and, and all that hoo-ha going on. That's that's great. Um, wins by three. I, I was interested in the price around a couple. Uh, first one, well, I started with Benadryl, who has been very good at hitting the line over a mile without having in its favour. Uh, over 400 metres out in its favour. I think the mile suits and uh, will be a nice swoop here. But it led me to find stage and screen as a chance. He sat three wide in that race last time out and was actually – just coming back through the line, I think it will run well here. Um, and Super Silius is 20. I keep making the case for it. It keeps running into second and third. It's gate one now, at 20 to one. I'm probably going to back try and back the three I've mentioned, depending how track's playing. But as I said, I'm, I'm more than willing to accept that um, this favourite might just be off and gone. Uh, Zaytung is probably the second obvious one if we're looking from an obvious point of view there. But uh, I'll play around the double figures with, uh, as I said, Supercilious, Benadryl and Stage and Screen. A bit more clarity here. Race 8, 2,000 metre Country Cup final. I think it's a fantastic bet here, Aaron Bay. I think 7 bucks is a great price. It's the proper Saturday Metro horse off a win a week ago in a better race. It comes back to, well, the Country Cup final, which is a bunch of horses coming off, uh, runs out wide. And the fact we get an each way price for a horse that should just be tagging Keats um, or sitting outside Keats here, it'll be in the finish. I think it was an, it's an easy bet to have from Charterhouse, who may want some rain around. But I, again, the Ramwick form just seems superior to the rest of this field to me. They're the two key hopes, in my opinion. What have you come up with? Yeah, look, um, I came up with, so I've just got to, I've gone for uh, Torrezino. I mm -hmm. uh, think it can run really well here. It got uh, way out of its ground last start, uh, back pretty much last in that race over the 1600. Finished off quite nicely down the outside there. 
um, at Flemington was the bigger track, but prior to that, um, had some good form. I think this will be the one that has the last shot of it. And if there's any chinks in the armour, around the $10 mark, I think it presents really good. It's got a lightweight, 51 and a half. This is not an overly deep field. Um, so I've got it on the top to run well. Aaron Bay as the main danger. The second of the features is the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes Group 1 uh, Handicap. 1,400 metres. We see another Will and Jimmy Star. Again, Clash. I think there's more to this race, but I'll let you go first again. Um, look, I I like another Will here. Um, I think it'll. there's no reason to go away from it. That was an amazing um, turn of foot last start. Never looked like it was going to get out. Had the cosy run, but I think it'll get it a a fairly one cosy, cosy run here again from the five. Um, it had the edge on Jimmy Star there. Um, Jimmy Star had the had the luck, had the run, and um, another word when it got the split uh, again was too good. I think it'll be too good again here. I'm super keen. Another will on top for me. It uh, should have won by further last time out. Simple as that. And I hate gate one for Jimmy Star. Have, like remember back to last prep when it couldn't get out all those times from the inside. Um, I think another will, all things being equal, is going to be very, very hard to beat. And if I'm looking at quaddy horses, the, there's forgotten horses here. Like, Gentleman Roy did win a Group 1 track and trip um, two starts ago here. And two of lose a Group 1 horse. Uh, resuming off the Wangoom, they're both 20 to 1. I would be entertaining both of those from a quaddy point of view, as I would Charmstone, who is now third up in a rehab prep and was very, very good behind Mahaba last time out, better than I realised. And it's a top horse, um, has had some time of injury, but is, is I think we tipped it to win, or I tipped it to win a Golden Rose once upon a time. Uh, another will clearly on top, but I do think there is prices to be, there's some nice odds around exotics and potentially a quaddy blowout with the, the other three I mentioned. Let's come home with the How Now Stakes for the Mares. We've got the big lead up coming through uh, the race a couple of weeks ago, but I've got one here at 20s, which I like, and that is Danny St. Darcy. Go back and look two back. It should have been Alentia in Sydney. Uh, just got held up on the inside. Then it was very good at last start, finishing just behind Isthmus. Isthmus. Um, and it's 20 to 1. So we're going to find out here. And it gets um, Daniel Stackhouse jumping on there. So let's find out. I think it announced he's a nice horse, but the horse that beat first up, Brendan, last in the lead up last week. So is a bit of a concern about the form. Uh, Pandalowi or... On um, so if you're looking elsewhere, I thought the, the danger to Danny St. Darcy might be extra too, who comes from chasing Barrakill and fits this race much better. She's bulletproof for going the quaddy as well, but a little bit of A to finish the day if we need to blast out. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I thought, I thought the favourite was um, the on top of here. Uh, I think it's going to be super hard to beat. It looks like a horse that's got potential. I know what you're saying there, um, but that was a listed race. I've got it on top, but you're right. There was a couple of odds that I liked, and Danny St. Darcy was one, but also like Cigar Flick mm -hmm. um, a little bit more. I know he finished fourth in the same race that you're talking about, um, and it flew home as well. Um, Waller down at uh, 10, 10 to 15 just, to 1, yeah, uh, scary, drawn 13. Yeah. So it's going to be able to get to the outside probably easier than Danny St. Darcy. So I think it's probably going to have the running line and it has a bit of um, Sydney form as well. So uh, I've got it as, uh, as a danger as well. Beautiful. Have you got a quaddy for us on Rupert Clark Stakes Day? Of course I have. Um, crazy of me not to. So starting first leg, race seven, uh, no particular order. Number two, Aliana. Number four, Zatang. Number 13, Stage and Screen. Number three, GG's Miss Truth. And number six, Dominetta. Uh, in the second leg, which is race eight, I'm going number eight, New York Hurricane. Number one, Aaron Bay. Number 17, Torrezino. Number two, Jimi Hendrix. And number 12, Dublin Journal. Yes. And um, race Nine, which is the third leg. I'm going number four, another Will, and number seven, Jimmy Starr. Going to go skinny there. And then to finish the day, I'm going to go number four, Neonce, number three, Infancy, number six, Cigar Flick, and number seven, Danny St. Darcy. 
Very good. Your best and value. My best is race nine, number four, another will. And my value bet is race eight, number 17, Torrenzino. Lovely. We head to my best, actually. I better tell that. Uh, Aaron Bay, eight, race eight, number one, I think runs very well. And my value, race 10, number seven, Denny's St. Darcy. Newcastle's next for the Hunter meeting. As I said, as they go on their little uh, out wide tour for a few weeks here, rail goes into the true, should be a decent enough track, should be close to, um, would be dead in the old. When the rail goes into the true, it can be up and in the inside. I think the last few years it's been along the rails, and last time I was here, the day Terramata run, it was very much rails in run for the most part, so that's a little bit concerning. But um, we'll see how that pans out. We kick off with the Max Lee's Classic, 900 metres for the babies. Beaver, would you like first crack at this? Oh, mate, you're too, you're too kind. Um, to be really honest, uh, not, a, not a lot of an idea here. Um, this is a lot of first starters, not a lot to know about these. I went for the Cummings blue colours just on the basis that they tend to bob up here. Uh, Secret Glory, uh, Charles uh, showed a bit. Uh, I'm not asked to do a lot, but uh, was there or thereabouts and can run well. Yeah, I saw, I saw what I needed to from that second trial behind Chicken Mama, who you liked last week, uh, just towed into that nicely. Uh, it's on top for me as well. The filly from a bar in Paris who trialled quite well alongside o Olay, who has gone around in some of the better stuff. The second is a mile midway, benchmark 72, and I've got Magneteer on top here. Uh, sat outside lead in a proper metro race first up and ran quite well. It was only just uh, nabbed late. That was behind Battleton. Sits in the same spot here. Second up record is great, and... Gate one, I think, is a, a advantageous this time of the day. From Arlo Mist, who's gate two, Nash, uh, inside run for, for at Newcastle should also be okay. I think they're the two main hopes. What have you thought? Yeah, I've gone for number three, Pirius. Uh, I think he can run well. Um, just, just working through nicely. Uh, ran on strongly last start um, and has the last two. Gets back in the field. Uh Thought it might almost get there last start. Uh, just missed out again. Uh, hit the front, but they got up the inside and just had the better luck in running. I think it'll be there or thereabouts again. Lovely. The Class 3 Highways next, a mile. I think we've got five mile races on this card. Who have you come up with this one? Mate, got no idea, to be really honest. Um, thought I'd probably just settle on number four bravely. Um, started sort of favourite in... Similar race here last start. It was a few lengths off them, but that wasn't a bad run um, after coming from Ipswich. I think it can be there or thereabouts, but so look, there's plenty of chances here. Um, number eight can run well, best of Ma. Um, got a little bit of ability there. Uh, Tangle with Jimmy can run well, except drawn off the track, and mm. who knows what else. Um, so I've got um, number four, Bravely, uh, to beat number eight, best of Ma, but I probably won't be betting here. Understandable too. I've gone. I've just gone Cable Express Gate One. As I said, I'm looking for early in this card. Jay Collett, the best Gate One jockey, about just about. Uh, lead is back. Cubs off the highway win, and you can nearly get an each way price at the moment. I think the stable mates the danger. Ghost Walker, who was very good in the same race. Um, tricky business. Bandasher coming down from Queensland might run well as well. The fourth is a little bit less tricky for me. We're at, still at the mile. We're up to benchmark seventy eight. And Bullets hide it all but win last time. Just got um, snoo just got nabbed up the inside. Third up now in an average race with Nashville Willer and the main danger, Dazzle Legend, probably coming out because it raced yesterday. Uh, I'm going to put it on top. One of the better bets on the card from Cockero if we're running on. was wasn't bad last time out, Beaver. Yeah, I'm keen Bullets Hide as well. Um, sets up perfectly for it and I expect it to be back into the winner's circle here. So my on topper. 400 meter benchmark 78 is up next. Who have you got for us? Uh, gonna go number two. Watch my girl here. Uh, first two runs this time in were pretty good, and then um, group starting group three last start and wasn't disgraced. Um, was only three lengths behind like Vate. Um, so comes back here to more suitable grade and uh, from the gate eight uh, can run well. Uh, I've gone with Pippi Beach on top. Uh, I'm in market order. Right jockey, right gate for what I th how I think the track's going to play. My concern is it might just be a slug. Um, so we will see here. From Watch My Girl, for all the reasons you just said, comes back from the Lecvade race and pushing forward will 
run much better than that. The six is a benchmark 88 over 1,850 metres. Uh, and I've gone with the grey here, uh, floating. I think it comes back from the big dance. And the more I look at this race, half almost looks the only hope in the race. I couldn't really make a case for many others, apart from it may not be in the right part of the track. Nice win before that. Bit of a claim. All looks positive for me. Uh, I thought hopeful at a big price. Might be able to push forward and um, run a race fresh. Stay resuming there. Uh sitting the one one might be something to offer what about you beaver yeah i went the same way i just purely went floating off the back of three starts back was a really nice win then it's ran fourth uh less than two lengths behind st lawrence who is going great guns at the moment carrying 58 and a half so not much difference here after the claim and then as you said the last start got way out of its ground um in that race won by gringetts um, it was only five lengths off from there. Uh, sort of St. Lawrence Green gets form this time of year in Sydney is pretty good. Um, and then when you go back prior to that, it'd be there on the loose. Um, so I think it's a very consistent horse. Uh, that price perfect. I think it can track along and gets the right run in the race. Any danger will be Townsend that um, they can't get past. The Quaddy kicks off with the Spring Stakes, Group 3 over the mile. Who have you come up with in what is a pretty average Group 3 race, if I'm being totally honest? Very average Group 3 race. I'm going for number eight, Schnitzer Nova. Um, lightly raced, only had the two starts. Uh, first race was a maiden, uh, was long odds, and there or thereabouts uh, wasn't the worst run. And then after that, went back to maiden company, Started ten dollars, sat midfield, and produced a nice finish to get the chockies there. Um, hopefully, it, that's got some some upside here in what is a fairly average race. So I thought I'd just go that way and just sort of take nearly the double figure odds. Um, but again, the the favourite gate one might be a bit of a problem. Alabama State, but it comes back here to a, a race that looks winnable. Um, out of the four pillars and didn't run too bad there, less than a length off and stuff. Main danger, but I just want a bit of value. I went with, um, I think, the 300's going really well. I know it's coming off midweek grey, but this is essentially a midweek race, as I said. it um, Three runs at 400 metres, I think out to the mile is going to suit. Gets control, is flying. There's not a lot of pressure up front. I don't even know who else pushes 40, maybe Titanium Miss. Uh, if it gets its own way, it'll definitely be in the finish I'm against the favourite. I just think that midway stuff isn't doesn't really stack up to Metro stuff all the time. So I'll make the danger. I'm scared of Stitzenova. Very much so. I liked it at Kenzo last time out. But I'm going to make the main danger, Altoff, who is, was good through the line in the Group 2 last time out and has to be alive here, even though it is very, very much starting to test the friendship. The eighth is the Group 2 Hunter, the feature on the card over 1300 meters and I went up and down this this lineup and I've ended up deciding with the blinkers going on it might be gone but I'm going to go with the Everest form and put private eye on top I have to say the Bella Nipotina form is better than this uh, is drawn out uh, but if we're running on hopefully can be in the finish here I think they've thrown everything against the wall Danger is Briasa, who might tag it in the run. It's drawn out as well. Uh, had the soft kill at the midweeks. Did beat Inhibitions, who you know, is a group-level horse on her day. Uh, so make it the danger. And look, the more I thought about it, Cole Crusher just bullying this race third up might not shock either. But um, one last chance for Private Eye. Viva? Yeah, there's only three chances. The, the three at the top of the market here. Um, that's fairly clear cut for me. Um, I'm going to go Briasa. I just like this is the fresh blood on the scene. Um, looks like it's got plenty of potential here. And, uh, you know, you mentioned it earlier, but half a length behind a striker. Um, good stuff, for, you know, probably short price favourite here. Um, that's good enough for me here. 53, I've got it on the top. Uh, you mentioned Private Eye. Just don't know where it's at at the moment, mm. but it has been racing in that top class company. So you've got to, you've got to, uh, be concerned about that and far too easy ran a great race beating the front page who frank that uh, did run well last a great run in yeah. um, last time down the straight at Flemington so wouldn't put it out but got a different draw here drawn 10 rather than getting the, the 
Kersey run behind with them. So three on those three are on top, clearly. They've all got the wider gates, which probably gives them slightly better value. The ninth is the Beaufort, a listed race over 2,300 metres. Who have you come up with? Yeah, this race sucks. Yep. Um, I'm going Spirit Ridge as yep. the top weight, best horse in the race. Um, first up was good. Uh, $7.50 is good and uh, has group, group form. Uh, look, not much else to it for me. I just don't know about the rest of them to find any confidence. Nothing more to add. This race sucks. Spirit Ridge will go forward, probably lead, and was very good last time out. I like the price. I was shocked it was so long. Yeah, it's on top. Uh, Herman Hess has actually put in some decent stuff in Melbourne this time out, so maybe it's the danger. Both are... Both at a very backable price. The last is a benchmark 94 over the 1,300 metres. And I sort of, by the time I was done with this, um, fell in love a bit with Spangler resuming here. I thought resuming at home, it uh, went out with the win. It's first up stuff last time out. It was good. This is a good horse. It's the best horse. It's getting a claim. It's 10 bucks. It's on top. Uh, from Battleton, quick backup. We'll get the right run if the inside is a place to be and is winning. Yeah, I'll throw the two blue colours horses into any quaddy I do because I'm sort of attached to them. That's about it. It looks like you in a grants. I am. Cool. Uh, it's pretty happy when I saw this. Uh, this, this horse goes all right. It's the right time of year for it. Absolutely. Um, has, you know, it's nearly one million dollars um, and it's got a three kilo claim. Uh, resuming here, $12. I think it can run well. Got it on top. Inhibitions is the danger. We talked about Briasa winning the race before, and it was uh, second to it last start. That's uh, starting at $3.30 um, behind Briasa. So, you know, I'm very nervous about it. I wouldn't let it get under my guard. And prior to that, three and a half lengths behind the striker. So it's got a striker Briasa form coming into this. I'm not sure why it's 9.50, to be honest. Um, based on that, it probably should be much shorter in the market. So I'll certainly be backing it as well. Didn't know, to be honest, I didn't know which way to put these around. No, that's fair enough. Uh, it, uh, I, yep, I'm in agreement. The quaddy on this um, Hunter card. First leg, let's go with one Altoff, three the 300, and eight Snits and Over. Second leg, one Private Eye, two Cold Crusher, ten, ten, Cryosaur. Yeah, why not? And 14 Briasa. Third leg, one Spirit Ridge, two Herman Hess, three Naval College, eight Nick Ausper, 11 Balance Play now third up, and we'll come home with two Astero for Nash, two, uh, two Spangler, three Astero, seven Amur, nine Battleton, and 13 Inhibitions. A hundred bucks should get you about a third of that. My best race for number four, Bullets High, my value race 10, number one, Spangler, Beaver. Yeah, my best is race eight, number 14, Briasa. And my value is race 10, number two, Spangler, 13 inhibitions. I think they're both value. Happy days. Very good. It. Um, what's happening in Queensland? We're, where are we? Sunshine Coast yeah, or somewhere? Sunshine Coast. Yeah. I think I might have a couple here for us. Okay. Um, with any luck. Um, Going to start off race three, number three, I am Arty. Yep. Uh, flying at the moment, uh, inside draw, even money. Uh, get us off to a decent start there. Uh, then we moved a bit later in the day, and I think we start to get a little bit more chance at some value here. Race six, number eight, substantial. Um, I think it can run well. Uh, moving to... Where was my next one? Now I'm lost. Uh, race nine, number nine, Shalar's moment, mm. uh, around the $6.50 mark. I think he can run well fresh. Yep. Um, that's how I'm looking up at the Sunshine Coast. Uh, only three there. Let's see how we go. Very good. Have you had a look at anything tonight? We've got Canterbury kicking off and we've got the Valley in play. Have you had a chance? I haven't. Yet? I haven't had a look, to be honest. Um, so nothing. What about you? Uh, very briefly, race four, number six, Autumn Storm, after no luck last week, comes here. And Canterbury, I think race five, number one, we've got the blue double. How dare you? Probably over the odds at about $6.50. And race six, number six, Kurgolin is a proper horse. Should resume with a win there. I think that's it. Anything else, Beaver, for the weekend? 
That's it for me, mate. Very good, mate. Thank you. We will talk soon. And punters, we will catch you next week to do it all again. Good punting and bye-bye.